Wastewater is treated to remove several substances, which, if discharged to our rivers, lakes and seas, would cause pollution. This treated wastewater is a resource and can be recycled and used for irrigation in agriculture, parks and golf courses. It can also be used for street cleaning. The current scarcity of water and recurrent droughts have made wastewater treatment and recycling important elements in the sustainable management of water resources. In large cities, complex and highly technical processes are used to treat the wastewater. These conventional treatment plants are expensive and require a lot of energy. The wastewater passes through a series of sequential phases. These are called pretreatment, primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment, where the pollutants are progressively removed from the wastewater. These processes allow the treated effluent to either be discharged into the environment or to be reused. For smaller populations, conventional treatment plants are often not suitable, since they constitute an expensive and a high energy consuming process. However, constructed wetlands represent an ideal eco-friendly and sustainable technology with a low cost of operation, maintenance and energy. Constructed wetlands are simple wastewater treatment systems. They consist of shallow tanks filled with a gravel layer and planting with emergent rooted wetland plants such as the common reed. These plants are well adapted to live in flooded conditions found in wetlands. As the wastewater flows through the gravel and the roots of the reeds, pollutants are progressively removed. Wetlands are constructed so that the wastewater flows below the gravel layer. This results in the absence of mosquitoes and bad odors. To observe the wastewater flowing through the constructed wetland, it is necessary to dig a hole in the gravel. This also allows us to observe the roots of the reeds. It is in this environment of roots and gravel that the wastewater is treated. Here pollutants are removed by physical, chemical and microbiological processes. The roots and gravel form a media ideally suitable for the growth of bacteria. It is these microorganisms which contribute most to pollutant removal. Constructive wetlands do not require as many components as conventional wastewater treatment plants. They require pretreatment, a system for sedimentation of solids, and the wetland itself. Pretreatment consists of screens to separate gross solids and plastics. These solids can easily cause obstructions and thus, it is best to separate them from the wastewater. After pretreatment, the wastewater flows to a septic tank where suspended solids are settled by gravity. After passage through the septic tank, the wastewater is partially clarified. As a final stage, the constructed wetland removes the remaining pollutants. Wastewater is fed to the wetlands by means of channels, therefore ensuring a uniform distribution throughout the bed. Water flows through the wetland and is finally collected by means of drainage pipes located at the bottom of the basin. Wetland effluent flows out through a swivel pipe that allows control of the water level in the wetland. The effluent from the wetland is very clear as all pollutants have been removed. Therefore, the effluent is suitable for water reuse or discharge into the environment. A research group at the Technical University of Catalonia has built a constructed wetland pilot plan on the floor of the laboratory of the environmental division. Results obtained will serve to improve the efficiency of future systems. The pilot plant is constructed such that analysis can be carried out to evaluate the efficiency of different operational parameters. 
urban wastewater is pumped from a street adjacent to the university to a storage tank. Then, the water flows to a system of tanks where the solids are partially removed by means of gravity. The wastewater then flows to the constructed wetland. The aim of the pilot plant is scientific research, but it also functions as a demonstration project. Thus, the pilot plant serves to encourage the use of constructed wetland technology while also proving to be a successful educational tool. One of the main problems with constructed wetlands is the clogging of the gravel media. Clogging is characterized by the appearance of ponds on the surface of the gravel. It is a problem when it creates surface flow. This leads to the creation of small rivers which flow across the gravel rather than through it. This results in reduced treatment efficiency and can result in bad odors. One of the major purposes of the pilot plant is to study the clogging process and to determine the mechanisms involved. The results will enable a better scientific understanding of the clogging process. It will also enable the proposal of a methodology to stop the clogging. As part of this research, wastewater samples are collected and analyzed in the laboratory. Special sampling devices enable gravel and root samples to be taken. These devices can also be taken out of the wetland to study the amount and characteristic of the accumulated solids. The pilot plant also has online recorders which measure several water quality parameters. Once measured and stored, this data can be downloaded to the researcher computers through wireless connections. In this way, the operation of the wetlands can be monitored very efficiently. Constructed wetlands are increasingly being employed for wastewater treatment in small communities. The main advantages of that technology are that constructed wetlands are simple to operate and do not require skilled labor. Energy and economic demands are low. The process does not generate waste and it is very adaptable to the rural landscape. What is more, they don't have visual or audio impacts and can act as environmental restoration projects.